Mr. Joseph! All of you walked by me and you were so rude to me. You were like, why is Henry Winkler selling t-shirts? Now look at me, I'm up here. Oh my gosh. That table thinks Tony Dan's is here tonight. They're like, no way. They're like, why is he here? Oh my God, this dude thinks the singer for the Chili Peppers is doing comedy. Oh my gosh, it's so good to be here. How good does it feel to laugh and we don't got a mask on? That feels good. Right? Come on. Check it out, check it out. Three days ago, got here to Denver, did my first flight without a mask on. Felt good, felt good. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you something right now, America looks a lot better with the mask on. It's just, I mean, some of you up, like you, sir, with the mask on, you're crushing it. It's just, she misses it. She asks for it when you come to bed. Don't forget the mask, honey. Uh, Me and you are the same. I love the mask. I'm crushing it from the bridge of my nose up, seriously. During the pandemic, women are like, I love your eyes. What's your name? I'm like, my name's Joe. Like, whoa, back it up. While I'm on the plane, I did something that I'm so ashamed of. I, it's embarrassing. I sneezed on the plane. <laughs> and people got pissed, they got angry. And for no reason, I just took it to the next level and I threw a cough out there. I just, I didn't need to, but I said, what's gonna happen? And I threw it out there and pe a woman stood up. She just stood up, he's a variant. That's a variant right there. She just, it was one of those women in like white pants in their 50s. I'm in my white pants tonight. You know, those women that are like, I've been drinking Chardonnay since 2 p.m. What's your name? Hi. Hi, I'm going through my second divorce, still getting alimony. What's your name? If you're not laughing at this joke. <laughs> you might be a woman in white pants tonight. I saw a lot of you coming by. You wouldn't make eye contact with me. Except one woman came over to me before the show. She's like, I love your hair. It's like, you're going fast, but you're not. <laughs> I told Jim that and he's like, damn, dude, you look like you're going a million miles an hour. You really do. Like the side view is ridiculous. What's up? When this woman stood up on the plane, it was like, you're a variant. I, and she put a face to it. It's like she, like she saw something that I didn't know and I thought maybe I am a variant. I don't know. <laughs> you know, when someone tells you something, you start believing it. I'm like, maybe I'm the Italian variant. Maybe I am. <laughs> you know, like I could be cannoli virus. <laughs> What are the symptoms? My eyebrows are connecting, I don't know. I got hair all over my body. I want chicken parm all the time, let's do this. Thinking of moving back in with my parents in the basement, I don't know. People would be like, how do you get rid of it? I don't know, you're like, dude, put this white tight wife beater on. Just put this on right now. And then put this gold necklace with this gold Italian horn on. Be gone in six days. Those are the things I think about, you guys. I just think it, I say it. Oh man, before I came out to visit you people, I had a wonderful day at my house where I gotta wait for at t to show up. You know, what other job can you have where you can say, hey, you know, I'm gonna be there between 6 a.m. and maybe 7 p.m. I don't know. <laughs> if anyone from at and is here tonight that works for at and uh, go die. Just, you know. <laughs> I know that's harsh, but none of us like you. And you don't have at and That's how bad at and is. They don't even have it. 
And you get on the phone with these people and they love to say things like, this call is being recorded for quality purposes. <laughs> really? Well, the quality sucks. It really does. <laughs> I canceled, I canceled at and but that took a full day and I went to their competitor where I live in Southern California. You're never gonna believe the name of their competing company, a million dollar company going up against at and The name of the company is Cox. <laughs> With an X, because they're not gonna be rude about it. to work with a company called Cox. And they came up with that name. Think about anyone that's working here. You're sitting around throwing business ideas out. You know, these guys are like, we're gonna make a multi-million dollar company. What should we name it? And the guy said, Cox. And no one stopped him. So I went to the, I called up and the woman answered the phone and she says, hey, are you ready for high speed internet? Yes, I am. You can stream anything. Yes, I am. We can do all the billing for you. It'll all be online. And then she said these words, are you ready to try Cox? And I said, hell yeah, hell yeah. And when my friends come over, they're like, I love your cocks. I got cocks in the bedroom, cocks in the kitchen. My neighbor's like, I love your cocks. I love that. And now I'm worried if I don't pay the bill, like, are they going to come back and take my cocks? <laughs> oh, you guys are fun. Because we have a rule now for everything. There's a rule for everything. There's a sign for everything. Even at the hotel I'm staying at right now, you've all seen this sign a million times. If you currently are experiencing diarrhea or have had diarrhea, don't go in the pool. That's a sign. And we don't need to go into detail. We know why we had that sign because uh, room 506 had seafood enchiladas and they're like, damn. My stomach's killing me, babe. What are you gonna do? I gotta go down to the pool. Like... <laughs> and we know what happened. Some guy on a Monday morning was down there cleaning it up and he was pissed. <laughs> we need a sign. How can people do this? We need a sign. And he went to management and said, we need to have a meeting. They said, hey, Tom, Tom, take it down a little bit. We're gonna table that till next year. He said, no, I wanna have a meeting now. And they all got together and emails were sent back and forth and they finally had the meeting. He said, Tom, what kind of sign do you think we should have? And Tom said this, how about don't in the pool? And right there in that meeting, a woman stood up in right pants and she said, no. That might trigger someone. <laughs> Signs for everything, you guys. Rules for everything. I hate rules. I hate them. I hate them. I grew up in the 80s. Punk rock hit the suburbs. I was there. The Ramones, Circle Jerks, uh, Social Distortion, The Misfits, those were my bands, you know? Even in the 90s, Rage Against the Machine. F you, I won't do what you tell me. You hear that song, you're gonna get fired up. Let's do this. You hear that song, you feel it. The other day that song came on, I was in my Prius. <laughs> I tightened up my helmet. I was like, let's do this. <laughs> Zero to 75, 2.3 minutes in that Prius. And I went to turn it up and the Prius was like, you gotta turn that down. <laughs> Rules. Everywhere I get it going. The road with Jim, I see the same sign in all your little neighborhoods. It's that, it's that little turtle, little yellow turtle holding a stick. A little stick, drive like your kids live here. If you're not laughing at this bit, it's about you, it really is. 
It's about you and that sign. And you telling me and everyone in this room what you gotta do. Hey, drive like your kids live here. Make sure. Really? Is that what you want me to do? Because do you know my kids? Do you know them? The Prius is gonna end up on the front lawn. It's gonna happen. And after the show, there's always someone that rolls up. I didn't like that joke about the sign, Joe. It's a sign for state. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Yeah. We just need a sign that everyone in this room could get their head around, right? Sign that everyone, just a sign you see tonight, and you're like, well, you know what? I gotta tighten it up a little bit. You know, like if you're driving home tonight after the show, you've had a couple cocktails, but you see a sign that says something like, drive, like you just left the bar and there's a cop behind you. <laughs> Denver, you're gonna tighten it up when you see that sign, right? You're gonna be like right up front, like, whoa, babe, we gotta tighten it up. <laughs> you're gonna look over at your wife and be like, roll down the window. If we're cold, we're sober. <laughs> you guys invented that. You invented it. And you're gonna be like, you know what? We should take our shirts off. That's what we need to do. Let's take our pants off. Just three naked people trying to get home, okay? You get pulled out, you just pop out naked. We're naked, but we're sober. How are you? <laughs> motorcycle riders. Where are you motorcycle riders here tonight? Yeah. Yeah, loud motorcycles. You love it. You annoy everyone and you love it. Yes. You just love to just, you know, we're on the freeway in the morning, coffee, and you just zip up. Yes. Just trying to listen to some NPR. Here we go. And you love it, because you go by and you like that. And you, yeah. What's up? It's, it's always one guy doing that. He's by himself. You know, and I get it, because you need the attention, and I, I know why. I know why. I know why your dad never played catch with you. I get it. Right? Dude, I own a Prius. My dad and I just threw the ball around all the time. Anyone here with a minivan, you had a dad that was throwing bombs to you. You know? I get it, man. That's why in my Prius, when a dude like you goes by, I follow him, I get up alongside him. And I got two baseball mitts in that Prius. <laughs> and I always look at him, they're like, what are you looking at? And I take up the mitts and I go, you wanna play catch? <laughs> you better not be fooling, you better not be fooling. <laughs> you serious? All right, I'll play catch. I'm on the side of the freeway throwing pop flies. What's up? What's your name? Jesse. Ah, oh, Jesse, give me that again. Here's a grounder. The divorce wasn't your fault, buddy. Come on. Come on. Before I have it, Jesse leaves the motorcycle on the side of the road, just gone. I always say the same thing as I ride away. Be good, and I'll come back and play catch again with you. I got a son. Yeah, I talked to him today. He's 18, I love him, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna tell you about my son, he's 18 years old and he hasn't had a shirt on since Obama was in office. Does anyone have a teenager at home that just touches themselves? Yeah, he just walks around, no shirt. Chest out. Just no shirt, and he loves to say this to me, Dad, you don't even know. <laughs> what world are we living in? No shirt. All his buddies come over, no shirts. Just smoking weed, it's legal, Dad. Just they smoke, I ate an M&M in my son's room, one M&M. I was wrecked for like six weeks. <laughs> Just wearing my pants, you gotta find my pants. They're on, Dad, okay. He sits out in the living room with all of his buddies. They all come over, just shirtless teenage boys. 
It's like to catch a predator at my house, it is. <laughs> and if I roll into my living room, hey, what's up, buddy? What's up? He's like, get out, dad. Get the hell out. Dad, these are my homies. These are my bros. I don't think so, son. I really don't. These aren't homies and bros because we live in a gated community. We do. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, unfortunately, if a homie or a bro got in, someone's getting fired. That's just happening. <laughs> what you have sitting around you is uh, comrades and future job references and fraternity brothers and white privilege. This is what you have. My fault. My fault. What world? I've already figured out what I want to do and, and take this home with you. I want to live as long as I possibly can. I want to live to be 100 just so I can move in with my son someday and have him take care of me and I can put him through the hell he's put me through. Right? Full circle. Right? I want to be in his living room shirtless. <laughs> You don't even know, bro. You don't even know. I want to invite all my bros and homies over. Other oh, 75 and 80 year old men just all sitting in the living room. Some of us in underwear, others in diapers. It won't matter. It's legal, bro. It's legal, bro. Here's an Eminem. Remember that weekend? Yeah. And I want to watch him go through everything I went through. Dad, you cannot live like this. And I'll be like, I know. When I turn 81, bro, I am so out of here. I'm... This place sucks. They always say it sucks. I just wanted to come down to the kitchen one morning. I'll be in there, just foot up, just manscaping for him. What's up, buddy? You don't like this? Making salads, bro. Making salads. That's when he'll break. I'm calling the cops. This is enough. I'm calling the cops. I'm like, you should, man. You should. Because when the cops show up, I'm going to tell them you beat me. I may be old, but I'm not dumb, son. And when the cops show up and they see seven elderly men partially naked smoking weed, that's elderly abuse and you're gonna go to jail. That's gonna happen. I think of that. I'm ready to go to assisted living. Who's with me? Let's go. What? Some of you look like you took the bus from there to here. I get it. I get it. I took the tour, the woman gave me the tour, and I'll tell you right now, assisted living is just like Las Vegas. There's a buffet, and there's people just wandering around, really just not knowing where they are, and they're just like, and they've had accidents, and they're just like Vegas. It's just, just like Vegas. And even there, the woman told me, our residents, some of our residents can't bathe themselves, Joe, so Derek bathes the residents. We need a Derek in our lives, you guys. I met him, big man with a beret on. Not sure why, but I loved it. And I watched him take this little teeny man into his arms, into a room, and he just, they just, he just held him, just held him and he gave him a bath and fed him crackers. They had their music on and they were moving around together just in sequence. And I was like, I gotta do that someday. <laughs> she also told me this too, she got serious. She said, hey Joe, just so you know, some of our residents, their family never comes to visit them. I was like, that's gotta cost a lot of money, right? That's a lot. How much extra is that? I'm not made of money, but that's free. I'll sign up for that now. They never come, okay? Oh, gosh. 
You know, I always like to tell people because they ask me, you know, did you get vaccinated? And I did. And I'll tell you why I did. Because I've never done drugs and I want to check it out. <laughs> and I'm still waiting for this shit to kick in. Moderna is gateway drug for me. <laughs> You know, and then I and I and I know that's a serious topic with everyone, and I and I don't want to make jokes about it, but I will say this, man. I, I feel bad. You know, people got vaccinated, they did the booster, they still got sick, and that's not funny. That's a bummer. You know, that's like that's like you wear the condom, you don't have sex. Here's your kid. Yeah. What's your name? Cannoli. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Me, they go, do you notice a difference since you got vaccinated? So I ask people, did anyone notice a difference? You know? The only, I have noticed this, though. Ever since I did it, I'd sing random songs, you guys. <laughs> Just random. Like today, I'm walking around this nice little, you know, mall out there, and I'm getting my coffee, and I just start singing, like, that song I grew up with as a kid. Uh, the sweet care, the sweet care, you know that jam, right? But I started singing this part. I started going deep into it, like remembering lyrics, that part where it goes, hands reaching out. Do you know that part? Touching you, uh, touching me. All together, sweet Caroline. The times never felt so good. people. <laughs> you guys are so much fun. Thank you so much. Did you guys have a good time? Thank you so much. Wow. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you.